Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And this is the Boker Albatross. Thanks to Stasa23 for sending it to me to review. I appreciate it, brother. Um, awesome dude. Awesome channel. You should definitely be subscribed to Stasa23. So, this is a discontinued knife, and it is kind of rare. But I did find some for sale. And that the re this video is probably going to be kind of short. And uh, I didn't do as much with this because it is kind of rare. And normally these things are originally, I should say, these things were around $100. Now, it is titanium VG10 and beautiful carbon fiber. Um, so, that was a pretty good deal. And this is an Anzo design also. Now, if you want to get one on eBay, they're about $300. I saw one on eBay, for this exact configuration for $300. They do have an all titanium version as well. Both of them are going for about 300 bucks on eBay. So since it's kind of rare or, you know, it is rare, I, I didn't, I haven't used it. Um, I am going to cut with it a smidgen on this video so we'll experience it together and but other than that let's get into it just a little bit this is a cool knife that this is the kind of knife that's just awesome right like you don't get this knife to be your ultimate edc or anything like that you get a knife like this because it's cool and it is it has a very unique sound that i just love i love the sound of this knife It's got like a double click. Yeah, I think this thing sounds awesome. And sometimes it even sounds better than it is right now. Just the way it goes when you try to get the sounds on camera. But like I said, this is titanium, VG10 and beautiful carbon fiber. The clip is titanium. The, um, the thumb stud is also titanium. You can remove it. And you can also use that other side to reverse flick. You don't have a lot there, but you do have something. Um, the stop pin on it is rather large. I love that. Very, very strong lockup. Now, it does not have a steel lock bar insert, but smooth lockup, or should I say smooth um, uh, disengaging. Haven't had no issues. The thumb stud is very accessible. It's nice and tall. So you do have a lot of access to it when you do deploy it. And it's a chunker, man. It is a chunker. And but the th but the action is really nice on it, whether you're slow rolling it or thumb flicking it. And then the reverse flick is doable. Um, now let's look at the drop because this is on Teflon washers. It's very, very smooth. A lot of the Teflon washer uh, community, I'm going to call them, the, the guys that just love Teflon washers, this is kind of the reason why, because of action like this. When Teflon breaks in, it's very, very glassy, and the smoothness is very, very smooth. You can get Teflon washers about as smooth as... Uh, bearings, or at least very close, or it's smoother than bearings, but should I say um, as drop shutty as bearings, but it's definitely smoother because it's just a different type of smoothness that Teflon gives you that, um, you know, bearings don't give you. Bearings roll in Teflon, it, it's, you know, it's there's pressure on it and it's like the grease on it, you know, it's just sliding. So it is different. Now this blade, crazy looking blade. It almost reminds me of like a rhino or something. Big old belly, but very deep hollow grind. I measured this one at about 15 thousandths behind the edge, but it's so thin and it goes up very high before it ever gets thick. Now, like Stasa 23 would say, it's got belly for days, belly for days. So it's not going to be the best cutter for certain tasks but then other tasks it's going to excel a uh, very thick blade stock as you can see i mean this thing is a chunker and in the hand 
Let's go to Ergo's before we actually start cutting with it and everything. Um, in the hand, you know, it's kind of a three finger knife, but I do have a little spot right there that I can kind of wrap around if I really want to, but for the most part, it kind of just slides off, you know? So the lanyard does kind of work out for me, but I tend to hold it like this. So um, it's a four finger knife when I hold it like this, it does have jimping and you can wrap your thumb right over the top of the jimping like that, you know, for really close uh, shaving or whatever you're doing. And the grip like this is really good too, you know, like at least if you're gonna slice something or if you're gonna use the belly right here for draw cuts, uh, opening boxes or whatever. The tip isn't gonna be very useful for you. It's rather thick and there's not much of it. Um, so it's just, it's not gonna be very beneficial, but we'll, tr we'll try a couple utility cuts just to show what I'm talking about. But, um, but yeah, it's okay in the hand, in this grip, but you know, it is very tall this way. And it's not that it's very thick this way, it's just that it's thick this way. And yeah, it's not bad in the hand. I, I don't mind it at all. Um, it does have the jimping on the lock bar that does kind of lock you in right here or with the middle finger right there. Now, let's talk about this clip because the clip works great, but you do have a deep spot or it's very, it's not deep. <laughs> you have a lot hanging out of the pocket. Um, so, but it does slide in and out of the pocket just fine. It works really good. The clip is amazing in, you know, at, in use. Um, in and out of the pocket, really nice. You can do it one handed. You can slip it out. You open up the knife and deploy it and get it right back in the pocket and get, you know, it's really nice when a knife can be taken out of the pocket, put to work and put back in the pocket without, you know, any hiccups now you can if you want it deeper you can reverse it to tip down i know a lot of people don't like tip down knives but some knives are just better tip down and this might just be that kind of knife that just works out better tip down so you can reverse it and then that way it, it will be deep carry so because it goes all the way up you know to almost the screws so it'd be very deep um Love the stone washing on this thing. The stone washing is very beautiful. The full tie version probably looks really good, especially if you had um, blue hardware to match the, the thumb stud. Let's talk about the hardware. So we have T8s all the way around aside from the clip. So not that big of a deal. And Let's talk about the detent strength really quick because I didn't talk about it. Very clicky detent. So, but perfect for the thumb flick. Let's go do a little bit of cutting and then we'll get to the bad. Okay, I'm only going to do a couple cuts because, like I said, since it's the rarity and everything. Slice is pretty good, but I can tell I'm getting over a very thick blade stock. But it cuts pretty good because of this thin hollow grind. I mean, when you got a thin hollow grind, they're gonna cut, man. Oh yeah, that cuts actually pretty decent considering the thick part of the blade stock. Yeah, I don't wanna cut more than that with it. So let's just try a couple utility cuts and then we're done with the cutting. <laughs> not a good utility cutter we're going to use the belly if you use that belly it works great <laughs> yeah. yeah the belly works just fine but it's still it's not you know it's not a utility cutter and the problem with using a belly constantly is that you're using a bigger portion of the blade rather than a tiny portion. If I was able to just use the tip, which I can, it's just, it's kind of awkward. I kind of got to raise all the way up where I get no leverage, stab it straight down and pull my arm straight back, which gives me no leverage. But, um, but when you can just use the tip, that's all the edge you're using 
in a cut or maybe a little bit more. When you have to use all belly, you're using a larger portion of the blade. So, you know. But all in all, it does cut actually relatively well considering. Yes, it's going to be kind of specific task kind of, kind of knife, but totally get you by. It's an awesome knife and it actually slices pretty good. So, and especially for like, if you were opening stuff up and using your knife specifically for that, this belly would be great for that. So, some bad things. Um, one thing is that the hardware is not very deep, even though it is T8s, and I'm very happy to see that it is all T8s, you know, except for the clip. They're not very deep. The pivot's fine, but these are kind of shallow. Don't get me wrong, they're not horrible, but they're a little shallow. Another thing is I can absolutely touch the tip of this knife and it seems to have the factory edge on it. That's another reason why I didn't want to sharpen it or mess with it because since it's such a rare knife, still has the factory edge, you know, I figure if Stasa23 finds out how much they're going for on eBay, he can turn around and sell it or trade it because it is a really cool knife, but I can totally just touch this tip of this blade so after sharpening it a few times you know it's going to probably be more accessible and i'm talking about after a lot of sharpening so you know obviously it can take um a couple sharpenings and it'll be pretty much the exact same but after a lot of sharpening you're really going to have you know be able to mess with that tip now if you use it if you put it in your pocket tip up it's not going to really matter so you know or should I say, because it is a right, you know, you put it in your right pocket. It's not a left-handed knife, so you're never going to slide and poke it or anything. So you got to actually kind of mean to, you know. Anyways, um, the next thing is that it, and this isn't really nothing bad, you know, because I, you know, I don't mind, um, specific oriented knives but it's limited it's going to be a limited knife it's not going to be a knife that's going to be an all-arounder or anything like that so you know and also it is discontinued so that you know that can be considered a bad thing as you're not going to be able to buy it from a store you will have to pay more for it from ebay or secondary market or trade for it now another thing I kind of wish they would have put, and I know a lot of knives, they don't do this, so I'm kind of bitching for nothing, but you see the big stop pin, nice big thick stop pin, but it's right into just carbon fiber, which does bring down the weight, and this thing is not, you know, it's not like it's a lightweight. Um, it's not very heavy, you know, but there's no milling in the titanium. It's got pretty thick titanium and then a very thick blade stock. So it does have a little bit of weight, but I wish they would have put like just like a little steel insert right here or something just for the pin to go into. Um, you know, it's just fine. It's rock solid. I just kind of wonder, you know, like over long periods of time or if you really bear down on it, how reliable that would be in just carbon fiber but i know a bunch of knives that are the same exact way and i've never complained so here's what it is next thing this sharpening choil the sharpening choil you know <sighs> They should have just did a straight down plunge grind, you know, kind of like how a Spyderco does, Spyderco Shaman, where it's just straight down. That way you don't get this smile right here or this thicker part, because in order to sharpen it, you're going to have to sharpen this thicker area or, you know, uh, Dremel in a new choil or a choil, I should say, not even a new one. They could have just dropped the plunge grind straight down to the blade instead of tapering it. That I think would have been better um because you see what's happening there how it's thicker and the sharpening you actually have to sharpen that thicker area not that big of a deal but you know it is a thing since i sharpen so much i tend to look at stuff like that and you can see this looks like it's a numbered knife number 23 um the original price on this was really good. Um, VG10 is not the best steel, you know, but it is titanium and carbon fiber and the, um, 
the blade steel is going to be, you know, very, very corrosion resistant. So one more bad thing. This is a very thick blade stock for such a, a little knife. Now, it's what makes it cool. So I honestly wouldn't take it any other way. So I hate to even label this a bad thing, but it is holding it back a little bit um, in some ways, even though it has such a thin hollow grind, you know, you only have the front because, you know, you can't cut here because it'll hit this stuff. So you only have this portion right here to really cut into stuff. And you got that big old thick blade stock to go over. And it is very tip heavy, as you can see. <laughs> it's very tip heavy so the the balancing point is right on the pivot i think instead of right here so uh but all in all great knife it is very cool um yeah awesome knife it's just cool man it's an anzo design boker plus is like their their better version of knives now boker you know has made knives for a very very long time but their plus knives are like their their higher end knives or their better knives so i like that they started doing the boker pluses um and this one's pretty awesome let's just do a quick size comparison really quick and then we'll get out of here so it's basically six and a quarter with a two and a half inch blade. A couple really quick size comparisons here is the Para 3, which obviously is, you know, a lot longer than it. Here is the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog. Great size comparison. This one's a lot chunkier, but they're about the same length. Here is... The Giant Mouse Ace Biblio, another one, basically the same. The Ace Biblio might, is a tiny bit longer, not by much though. And one more, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian, which you can see is a little tiny bit longer than it. So there you guys go. Thank you, Stasa, and thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Peace.